Hello everyone, we're here to talk about lighting yet again. Okay, this video is about lighting big areas on a model, like you want to set a mood on a diorama and it's going to be dark in the room. Or primarily science fiction models like spaceships, uh, Star Trek models, they have their warp engines or warp nacelles are lit up fairly well. Millennium Falcon from Star Wars is lit up fairly well across the back and a few other things like that. Um, I don't know if this is going to apply to trains, tanks, planes, cars, that sort of thing. I know a lot of the videos I'm putting up will apply to those because with cars you can light the headlights, tanks you can light the headlights, trains, well you got a diorama on a train set so you've got buildings to light and all sorts of other things. Yeah, you could use some of the slide buildings I think. Various other stuff like that. There's, there's lots of uses for most of what I've been doing with you guys. This one... I can't see a whole lot of uses for other than starship lighting or lighting small areas of models. But then again, if I start really getting creative, I'll come up with uses for this stuff. And what we're going to talk about today are two different types of lighting, okay? We're going to talk about LED strips. I forgot what they're called, like S SMC strips, and there's two different kinds of those. And we're going to talk about code cathode lighting. Now, Cold, cold cathode lighting is fluorescent lights, the like this desk lamp right here, this is a fluorescent desk lamp, on a smaller scale. They're the tubes that are used to light big screen TVs if they're not LED backlit. Cell phones have them, laptops have them. They're pretty common, okay? Their lifetime is 40 to 60,000 hours, maybe 20,000 hours, depending on the brand and whether it's overdriven or not. And they're readily available. Some people are saying they're getting hard to get. You just got to learn how to find them. I'll put a link to them at the bottom of the video. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here is show you guys both the LED light strips and the code cathode lighting. When I'm done, I've made a list. It's on this piece of paper right here where I go through and I talk about the positives and negatives of each one. I went through and evaluated a bunch of different things like durability, price, power requirements, availability, things like that. So let's get going on this. I've got them both plugged into my power supply over here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Right now only the LED is going to come on because the switch for the cold cathode is off. I'm also going to kill the ambient lighting in here so it's going to get a little funny. So let me go shut the lights down. Because that won't take very long. And I don't really want to shut the camera off for that. And let's cut them on, shall we? You can see the LED strips lit up. I'm going to cut on the power strip supply for the code cathode. So we can see them both lit at the same time. Let me cut this light off. So now the only lighting we've got are these two. Here's the LED strip laying side by side with the code cathode. Let me get my camera up, reposition it a teeny bit, and we will play zoom in. You know, I'm kind of famous for that. General Splatton made fun of me for it. Just kidding, General. It, that was all in good fun. Okay, now you can see the difference in them. One potential thing some of you are probably noticing right away is you can see the individual LEDs in this. Code cathode is one solid light. And that's one of the things I was going to discuss is hot spots. LEDs have hot spots. Code cathodes do not. So if I were to put this in the back of the Millennium Falcon, it's going to be very uniformly lit. If I'm going to put this in the back of the Millennium Falcon, I've got to figure out how to manage those hot spots. And I've been trying to think of some creative ways for that. One way I'll show you in the second part of this video. Another way is to stack these guys next to each other and stagger them. So it's just a little uneven, but it's not a bright spot like this. In other words, if I were to take and you're not do this, but offset them a little bit, and then put some opaque paper behind beside them, it will take down a lot of the hot spots. Okay. Now we need to talk about brightness here, and I'm going to go ahead and cut off if I can find that switch without getting my fingers into something I shouldn't. There it is. We cut that off. Now brightness of these LED light strips. I can read my paper by them. If I, if I move them, position them right, I can read the paper by them. And I'm going to bring over here a 
bottle of Mr. Dissolve putty I just got. Yeah, I finally tracked some of that stuff down. That's been what's holding up the putty video. I was waiting for it to get here. But you can read that on the camera just fine by, even if I pull it away, the camera has a little bit of trouble focusing because they don't really do all that well in all this blue light. But you can read it, okay? And I'm holding the LED strip away. I can read this very fine. It's putting out quite a bit of light. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut off this LED strip and cut on the cold cathode. All right? Now, cold cathode. You can read that a lot better, can't you? A lot easier. And even if I hold this up here, you can still read it well. That's because the cold cathode's putting about twice the light what those LED strips are. Almost exactly twice. I measured it with my camera. I was playing with shutter speeds in a really dark room, no ambient lighting. And what I found was that, and we can cut this back up here, what I found was that the shutter speed was half on the cold cathode that it was the LED. Right in half. I was seeing um, 1 100 on the LED without a flash set to pretty much auto on my camera, just no flash. And I was getting 1 1 250, 1 500 occasionally with the cold cathode strip. Now, that's kind of a really bad view there. Let me go ahead and cut the power supply off and cut some lighting back on. All right, now that I'm back, oop, wrong way. <laughs> Now that I'm back, um, let's discuss the pros and cons of these things, shall we? The big problem with the cold cathodes is heat. This was on for just a little bit. The LEDs were on about the same amount of time. They're cold. They're room temp already. This is warm. Leave this on for a while, it's going to generate a lot of heat. It's what they do. I've got a 46-inch LCD TV that's powered by these. I'll leave that on for more than 20 minutes, the room's heated up 5, 10 degrees. They put out heat. LEDs put out heat, but not as much. And that probably has something to do with the light, too. This puts out more light, some more heat. There's nothing to do, no, nothing you can do about that. Now, why is heat important? Models are plastic. Too much heat, they soften, they melt, they distort. The electronics to drive these things, they don't like heat. Too much heat, and we have issues. Okay? The power supply, this thing right here, if you look closely, it looks like there's a speaker in that thing. Th I mean, this is a power inverter for this thing. You can see it right there. There is no speaker in that. That's for heat dissipation in the power inverter for the cold cathode. So heat's a big problem with those. Next up is durability. These, pretty dang durable. I mean, I, I, I abuse them all the time. I throw them around. Not a big deal. This, not careful, it'll break. Pretty fragile. I've broken I don't know how many of these things. I used to work with them when I was building model um, computers and modding computer cases. I, I used to have some beautiful computer cases back when I sold computers. So, not as durable. Price, about the same. 12 inch one of these is about six bucks. Model Man Tom, a modeler's brand is selling this. About six, seven dollars a foot. Well, Twelve inch of this, six bucks. Twelve inch of this, six bucks, seven dollars. Roughly about the same, if you look at the cost from that perspective. Okay, you can get these in longer. Size availability of these is two inches to twelve inches. Fourteen inches, I've seen. They're kind of rare. These come in all sorts of colors. The LEDs call, come in all sorts of colors. So there's really no difference there. So the price really shouldn't be consideration. Other things should be like heat output, brightness, hot spots. And hot spots, these got them, those don't. Again, second part of the video, I'll address the hot spots. Okay? Power requirements. Both of these are going to require so much power you don't like this with batteries unless you go get a big radio controlled car, plane, helicopter, battery pack, and power it that way. I have one of those. I, I'm not going to put that in a model. Because they got their own set of issues. They generate heat while they're discharging. A lot of heat. So I'm going to use a wall wart so the power requirements are out. Here's the last point I'm going to discuss. Then I'm going to quit this off. And we're going to get to see some of the different brands of LED light strips. I'll discuss that in a second. Is availability. These are getting harder and harder to find. I used to find them on eBay all over the place. All sorts of sizes. Now they're down to pretty much the 12 inch standard on eBay. 
if you know where to look, if you did computer mod case modding way back in the day, those guys are still selling these things for six, seven bucks. Again, I'll put a link to both the LED strips where I got these and this at the bottom of the video. Okay, I, actually, I didn't get this at the link I'm going to give you, but I know that link is good and active. Um, I had this for like six years in storage case. I've got like eight different colors of these still. Um, so, ranking them that way. Heat, bad, good. Quick rundown. Durability, bad, good. All right? Price, the same. Hot spots, don't have them, has them. This is the first negative this has had. Power requirements, the same. Availability, these are getting harder and harder to find. These are getting easier and easier to find. Now, let me say one more thing about looking for these. When you go looking for these, these have three LEDs per inch. Most of these are going to have one, one LED per an inch. One LED per an inch is going to be harder than crud to get rid of your ambient lighting issues. I mean your hot spot issues. Three LEDs per inch, not so bad. So that's one thing you want to look for when you're looking for these things. So if I had to go an overall rating, I'm going to go with this simply because availability, ease of use, and durability, and heat output. Okay. If I'm concerned about lighting first and foremost, this. But this generates heat. And without putting a cooling fan in your model, you really don't want this in there. So there you go. There's my review of these two products. Give me an idea what's going on. I've used these before. I know how to work with them. They run on 12 volts. These run on 12 volts. That's why I picked 12 volt system for the Millennium Falcon. Because I knew I could interchange these. I'm going to go with this for the Millennium Falcon simply because I've never worked with them before and I want to give them a try. These I've worked with a lot in the past. Okay. And again, the heat output on this worries me some. Heat output on this, it's there, but it isn't as high. And when you shut them off, the heat stops. This one's just now at room temperature. All right, guys. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed the video.